Hear John Charles Thomas on the telephone hour at 9. This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today transcribed, we present the opening chapter of Book 71, entitled, A Reintroduction to the Barbers. There is probably not a good-sized handful of radio listeners throughout the United States who are not familiar with the name of Barber. The Barbers of Seacliff, San Francisco, that is. Henry Barber, the head of the House of Barber. Fanny, mother and grandmother to all the Barbers. Paul, the strong right arm to anyone in trouble. Hazel, the eldest daughter, now married to Daniel Murray, and the mother of Hank and Pink, the twins, and Margaret, the dark-eyed 12-year-old daughter. My goodness, do you expect anybody to keep track of a list of names like that? Oh, Hazel, uh, Mrs. Daniel Murray, that is. How about a little help? <laughs> I don't know why. We've been friends and neighbors of the radio audience for almost 18 years now. If they don't know us now, I doubt if they're ever going to. Still a recapitulation. Oh, well, how far have you got? Uh, that you are Hazel, the wife of Daniel Murray, and the mother of twin boys, 16, and the young daughter of 12. Mm-hmm. Well, Hank and Pinky and Margaret are out in the swimming pool at the moment. We're up at the Sky Ranch for the summer, you know. The Sky Ranch? Yes. You know, Nikki and Claudia's summer home, 40 miles down the peninsula from San Francisco. That must be in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Yes. Uh, here, Nikki's out on the front porch in the hammock. Let him tell you about it. Oh, Nikki. Yes? Someone's facing me? Come in here, please. Hello. Right Will you put people excuse me, please? What's on your mind, Hazel? Oh, hello there. Nikki, this is Mr. Frank Barton, and he has some questions. Oh, the inquiring reporter? <laughs> In a manner of speaking, yes. <laughs> you see, after all these years of broadcasting on Sunday afternoons, one man's family has now moved to this beautifully cozy spot on Monday evening. And, well, it seemed only proper to catch up a few threads for some of our, your new neighbors. I see. Nicky here, uh, Nicholas Lacey, that is, formerly of London, England, is my favorite brother-in-law. Your only brother-in-law is. <laughs> anyway, he's married to my sister, Claudia. And Nicky and she are the owners of this gorgeous horse-breeding ranch up here in the high places of the Santa Cruz Mountains. The Santa Clara Valley is below us on one side, and the Pacific Ocean's a half mile below on the other. And you're 40 miles from San Francisco. Mm. Almost to the 10th mile. And here we are, and here we shall remain all through July, August, and most of September. Just smell that fragrance of sun on the redwood needles. Listen to the buzz of those lazy insects. Feel the warm sun cooled by ocean breezes in the back of your neck. <laughs> oh, goodness, Nicky. What Chamber of Commerce is paying you? <laughs> yes, I think that tells me all we need to know about the Sky Ranch. Well, now, just where do you fit into the Barber family? Well, an Englishman born. I was lured to America some 15 years ago by the younger daughter, Claudia. I've been a loving, devoted husband, a fond brother-in-law, and a worshipful son-in-law ever since. <laughs> And let me add that there are two daughters in the family, Joan, 16, and Penelope, 10. Hello, did somebody mention my name? Oh, Joan, my dear, come here. Okay. What's the big hairy deal this time? <laughs> big hairy deal indeed. Joan is Mr. Barton, a chap on the prowl for information concerning the barbers. Mr. Barton, my eldest and well-beloved daughter, Joan. Mm, I see you're going swimming. Yes, you see a great deal these days with these modern bathing suits. Oh, <laughs> Hazel, that from you? Yes, Hazel, how about that? Well, I just can't seem to get used to these bits of draperies they call bathing suits these days. A bit of the old-fashioned girl coming out on you. Well, excuse me, please. I've got a date in a swimming pool, and then Paul and I are heading back to town. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Uh, uh, what was your name? <laughs> No memory for names, just like a mother. Uh, pardon me, will you, gentlemen? I want you to meet my husband, Daniel. Now, out on the front porch, I think, Hazel. Thanks. Oh, there's my wife coming downstairs. Apparently going swimming also. Oh, Claudia. Hi, Nikki. Come on swimming. Uh, come here, my dear. Oh, hello. I didn't know we had guests. Claudia, Mr. Barton. My wife, Mrs. Lacey. How nice. Excuse me if you catch me all unaware and ready for the swimming pool. I'm really quite happy I did. <laughs> quite. You can see what Joan got her good figure. Oh, goodness, compliments from a husband. Oh, I take it Joan got out then. Yes, and I must say you've chosen a much more modest garment in which to swim than your daughter. <laughs> this is last year's suit. Wait until next year. Oh, Joan, I don't think the law will allow it. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me. Oh, Nicky, telephone. Someone say telephone. Oh, it's Jack calling. Oh, Nicky. Calling over. 
Uh, Claudia, will you look after our guest a little? Excuse me, please. Oh, would you like to come out to the swimming pool? Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't concentrate. Do you mind? Oh, do you have to concentrate? Well, yes. My job is to sort out the barbers. Well, I think you must have my branch pretty well sorted. Nicholas, my husband, my eldest daughter, Joan, 16, my little daughter, Penny, 10, and myself, Claudia. The second daughter of the second generation and Clifford's twin. Well, that's wrapping it up in a small package. Oh, and here's Hazel back. Oh, that's Dan with her. He's Hank and Pinky's stepfather, isn't he? Mm Mm-hmm, and Margaret's, too. But you'd never know it. Everybody loves everybody in that family. Come on, Dan, then you can get back to your discussion with Mother. Mr. Barton, this is my husband, Dan Murray. Hello, glad to meet you. I understand you're having a good time straightening out which barber is which and who belongs to who. I'm beginning to see light. Well, here you have Hazel and Daniel. Out there in the pool, you see our three young hopefuls, Hank, Pink, and Mark. And that's this branch of the family, the Murray branch. Oh, good. I now have the Murrays and the Lacey's trade. Well, then you'll excuse me. Oh, no, no. Just a minute. I don't quite understand about your daughter, Joan. Did I hear her say she was going back into San Francisco this afternoon with somebody named Paul? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Paul will have to explain that himself. Hazel, would you be a good egg and go get Paul? I'm in no condition to go any place but to the swimming pool. <laughs> of course I will. Thanks awfully. The girl can't stand around in the dry bathing suit indefinitely. That's our Claudia. Excuse me. I'll see if I can find Paul around someplace. Well, why don't you let me go, Hazel? Oh, you keep this to Barton Company. I'll be right back. You, uh, where's what Paul? Uh, yes. Well, he's the eldest son in the family. He's right up next to Mother and Father Barber. Sometimes I get the impression, standing on the sidelines, viewing the family through the eyes of a son-in-law, that once in a while Paul even supersedes the older generation. In town, he lives at the old family home, you know. Is that so? Yes, his quarters, bedroom, studio, I don't know what all, all up on the third floor, the whole top of the house is his. All alone? Yes, ever since his adopted daughter, Teddy, grew up, became an army nurse, and went off to service in American-occupied Germany. She's still there? Still there and liable to stay. Oh. Yes, one of the little tragedies of the Barber family. You see, Paul adopted Teddy when she was about seven years old. She grew up in the family home, and, and her little girl affection bloomed into a desperate, grown up love. She was always a daughter to Paul, and for her it was everything or nothing. She couldn't have everything, so she chose nothing. Went away to Germany to help others. What an intriguing story. Oh, you haven't heard anything. His family's fairly alive with undercurrents of one sort or another. Wait till you hear about Clifford and his lost 11 years. Jack and his trip with Oh, now, now, wait a minute. Let's stick to one thing at a time. Oh, yes, Paul. Ever married? Yes, he married an American Red Cross nurse in the First World War while he was fighting in France. Married two weeks, and Paul was shot down in an air battle. And they pieced him together, and he was able to ask for his bride. And they had to tell him that during his convalescence, an epidemic had broken out in her hospital ward, and she was one of the first victims. He must just barely have been of fighting age when all this happened. Underage, actually. But he never recovered from that one long-ago love. No other woman has ever taken his heart completely. Uh-oh. Here he comes. <coughs> Handsome, isn't he? That's his kindness showing through. Well, what is this in here? Hazel blasted me out of my garden chair. What is it, Dan? Oh, Mr. Barton. Mr. Barton, Paul Barber. Ah, a visitor. He's here to segregate the barbers into their various pigeonholes and recapitulate the highlights of their lives from the benefit of new neighbors on the airways. Well, you've taken on a job for yourself. So I'm beginning to find out. Have you met Dad and Mom yet? No. Well, there would have been your natural starting point. From their loins have sprung all this vast, teeming mass of humanity, which you see on every side cluttering up the landscape. <laughs> we'll get to them in a moment. Why don't you come on outdoors where you can really see what the Sky Ranch is all about. We'll sit under a redwood or a madrone and do this thing right. Not too tricky. Come along. Come on, Dan. Uh, join in a little. You folks go ahead. We'll go out this way where we won't be run down by a motor scooter or hit by flying footballs. Well, I've got the hazel and body of branches from family pretty straight in my mind. I don't quite see where you come into the picture with Claudia's daughter, Joan. Oh, that's it. Well, here, sit down. Put your back up against that tree. Yeah, how's that? Oh, that's good. What'd you happen to hear about Joan? Oh, I talked to her a minute. That she wanted one more dip in the swimming pool before she you took her back to the city. I see. Well, every family has at least one problem child in almost every generation. It's almost axiomatic. Jones, a problem child? Well, let's say she has the potentials for it. Some children accept their lot in life without question. Even some horses accept the bit and the work collars if they were born to it. 
Other children and animals will fight every step of the way. Horses become outlaws, children become delinquents, and then criminals. And Joan? Well, Joan stands very much in the younger generation for what my brother Clifford stood for in our generation. Clifford, uh, that's Claudia's twin brother. Yes. I'm the eldest, and Hazel, and Claudia, and Clifford. But what I was about to say was, Clifford and Claudia, to some extent, were the rebels in our generation. Claudia married Nicholas Lacey, and he's changed her. Clifford never did find himself. The older he grew, the more resentful and rebellious he became. He still is? No. No, he recently had an automobile accident, and a strange change for the better has come over him. But that's a whole story in itself. The thing is that Clifford has lived over half his life in a state of frustration and resentment and insecurity. Well, I've seen the same first budding signs in my niece, Joan, and I set out to nip them before they become a habit pattern in her life. Are you a psychiatrist? No. Actually, I'm not even a psychologist. No, but I've always been sincerely absorbed in the human side of life, especially where it touches on members of my own family. Yes, it shows in you. <laughs> well, anyway, Claudia and Nicholas have agreed to allow Joan to come and live at the family home out in Seacliff, San Francisco, for the summer. Is you two alone? Yes. You see, I have the whole top of the old family home to myself, including an extra bedroom, which used to belong to my adopted daughter, Teddy. Yes, I know about the top of the house and Teddy. Oh, somebody else has been talking, I see. Well, I have to keep an eye on my training school down at the airport every day, so I found Joan a job in the traffic office at the airport. She wanted to work when she could spend the summer up here? Well, we'll spend weekends up here. Well, yes, but isn't that odd in a girl of 16 to give up horses and swimming pools and country vacation? <laughs> Persistent, aren't you? <laughs> well, if I'm going to get at the bottom of the yeah, barber, I see your point. Well, the fact is, actually, Nicholas Lacey is not Joan's real father. Oh? Claudia married a youngster just out of college named Johnny Roberts when she was 19. In fact, ran away to Reno with him. Marriage went smash almost before it got underway. And young Roberts died of pneumonia after an airplane accident in China. Joan was born after her father's death. That's right, yeah. And then Nicholas Lacey came into the picture. Although he and Claudia have been married since Joan was two years old, she's never accepted him as a father. Why do you suppose? Well, you want my theory? That's all it is, a theory, but it's yours if you want it. Please. Almost always in every family where there are daughters, there's an instinctive, unconscious vying between the girls and their mother for the love and attention of the men in the family. What's this? Well, most people would be shocked if they knew this, but... It's as actual and as true as life itself. Any social worker can tell you more about that than I can. However, in a well-adjusted home, and especially in homes where the husband is also the father of the daughters, those stresses and strains of rivalry between mother and daughter are good and wholesome and tend to tie the family closer together. <laughs> You're getting in too deep for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the horrors that are coming out in me. Now, what I'm trying to say is that the natural rivalry between mother and daughter has been intensified in the case of Joan and her mother, Claudia, because Nicky is only a stepfather. Joan has an affectionate nature and would like to give her love wholeheartedly to her father, but she doesn't feel that Nicky is her father, but just a handsome man who is married to her mother. You mean she's jealous of her mother? Partly. She's frustrated because she has no father on whom to bestow her affection. She's afraid to express her need to love and be loved by Nicholas because it shames her to think that maybe it isn't exactly a daughter's love. And on top of all that, Claudia can't help but sense some of his conflict in Joan and feel some of the rivalry. And that doesn't do anything but cause further complications as Claudia instinctively raises defensive barriers. <laughs> so you're taking it on yourself this summer to solve a complicated setup like that? Well, if I'm right, and Joan is just suffering from lack of a father's attention, who knows? Perhaps I can satisfy that need and solve Joan's whole emotional problem. As easily as that. Will it be a father's affection she gives you, or something else? Well, I'll see to that. The way you saw to it that your adopted daughter, Teddy, kept her emotions within control? Oh. <laughs> well, I, I can answer that on several grounds. To begin with... Teddy was 21. Joan is a little girl of 16. 
Beyond that, I have much greater knowledge on the subject than I had when I adopted Teddy. And finally, Teddy's was an experience spreading over 15 years. Jones will be a matter of a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh, here comes Claudia with Clifford. No, 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 don't get up. No one stands on ceremony around here. Those two are twins? Well, not identical twins. I see you rounded up Cliff, Claudia. Yes, it didn't seem quite fair for you to mon- <clears throat> monopolize the inquiring reporter completely. Mr. Barton, this is my twin, Clifford. No, 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 sit still. You look so comfortable. Oh, yes, please. Oh, Paul, while Mr. Barton's talking to Cliff, could you come and give Nikki and me a hand in the library? Well, I'll give you a hand in the library if you give me a hand onto my feet. <laughs> okay. Oh, you can't. For goodness sake, Paul, you can't be that heavy. You sure you didn't take root? A little more respect for your elder brother, young woman. <laughs> Listen to the man. Will you excuse us? Oh, certainly. And thank you, Paul. Not at all. Must keep the family records in order at all costs. Eh? Well, I'll see you again before Joan and I leave the city. I'm always amazed at Paul. He's got more facets to his character than an old-fashioned diamond ring. Oh, I found him very easy to get acquainted with. You think you got acquainted with Paul at one sitting? You just got a glimpse through one door, fella. Well, I've known Paul Barber since he used to give me a nursing bottle. And he's still as far beyond me as that horizon over there. That's an interesting statement. I could make a lot more just as interesting. What about you? Plug said you had a mission and you were visiting us for a purpose and, uh... And I was to tell you anything you wanted to know. And you're willing? Shoot. Well, Paul just mentioned that uh, you had an automobile accident. Yeah. You mean you want the whole story of my life? Is your life story tied up with this accident? Mm, it certainly is. Every living, breathing minute of it. Well, let's have it. Well, it seems that when Claude and I were born twins, she was given a lot of fight. And I was given a lot of frustration. You know what I mean? We were children of a kind of mid-Victorian puritanical family, and... We were getting our first taste of life right in the middle of a prohibition flapper rebellious younger generation era. Late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. Well, strict discipline at home and all kinds of license and freedom just outside the door kind of mixed us up. But we reacted differently. Claudia butted her head right square into it. She was either going to lick it or go down fighting. And ended up moving to Reno. Oh, you know about that. Yeah, well, uh, little Cliff, on the other hand, got confused at and confused at and ended up by becoming completely hamstrung by frustration. On top of that, I... Well, this is still kind of sensitive. This is about your wife, Anne. Yeah. Well, anyway, Anne. Anne Wait. She was the daughter of a music professor at the University of California. Didn't have a mother. And Anne was as unfamiliar with the world as a stuffy old music lover of a professor father could make her. She, um... Well, she, uh... Yes. She hated marriage from the very moment she found out what it was all about. Hmm. Only lasted about three months when she left me. Went back to her father's house across the bay in Berkeley. And it was on one of those trips back from trying to see her and failing that I smashed up on the Bay Bridge and woke up with a silver plate in my skull. That was when? February 1938. And after that? Well, the rest is only hearsay. What? Yeah. Here about four or five months ago at... It seems I had another automobile accident and lit on my head again. When I woke up this second time, I thought I was waking up from the first accident 11 years ago. You've lost 11 years of your life completely? I'll tell you how completely. I woke up this last time with an 11-year-old son that I didn't even know I had. I didn't know Anne was going to have a baby when I had my first accident. I woke up this last time to find that during these 11 years, Anne had died. And I'd married and lost the second wife, a girl named Irene. Do you have any idea how it feels to have been the husband of a girl who, who isn't even a memory? You can't yourself believe ever existing? Tough. Are you kidding? Well, here I am today getting acquainted with an 11-year-old son whom I seem to have neglected completely during those 11 years I can't remember. Oh, yes, and then there's Roberta Evans. Who's she? girl I was supposed to have been in love with before my last accident. I didn't know who she was when I came to, but I've got to know her pretty well again. Going to marry her? Live, Barbara, marry for the third time. I've always been a pretty monogamous boy in my own mind, but um, I don't know. Whatever circumstances demand, I suppose I'll agree to. Hey, aren't you getting a little tired sitting on the ground? Oh, <laughs> redwood needles are a pretty soft cushion. Come on, let's stretch our legs, huh? You wanted me to tell the rest of the family. 
We're kind of out of the traffic here. Give me a hand. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, come on, we'll head around the house. Oh, have you met my sister Hazel? Yes, and Claudia and Paul, and now yourself. Well, that just leaves Jack, our youngest brother. I think he went horseback riding. Well, talk about the devil. Hey, Jack! Jack, where are you going? Oh, Cliff. Just got back from a ride up the wood road. Ought to take a shower and get into my swim trunk. Well, well, come here for a minute. Sure, okay. He's the attorney of the family. Married to Betty. He has six daughters. Six? That's what I said, six. Oh, Jack, I was just telling Mr. Borden here that you're the parent of six daughters. Six beautiful daughters, doggone it. How are you, Mr. Borden? Oh, fine, thank you. But tell me, how could a boy your age be the father of six children? Well, uh, three of them descended on us all at once last New Year's. Oh, triplet. Yeah. Abigail, Deborah, and Constance. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, uh, Mr. Borden's here to get a full resume of the whole Barber family. You're next in line. So tell him anything he wants to know. Wouldn't you rather wait until I've had a change and don't smell so hoarse? Oh, that's quite all right, Jack, if you don't mind. No, no, I'm comfortable. You want to go up and sit on the steps, or shall we grab these lawn chairs? It's nice out here on the lawn. Okay. Oh, hey, is Dad around? He's got to meet Dad. He's down under the madrones in the hammock. I saw him as I came up from the stable. Oh, Clifford! You being Paige, Cliff? Yeah, Hazel, out here. Could you come around to the kitchen and help us move the ice cream freezer out of the kitchen? Ah, oh, ice cream for dinner. But I'll be right there. Thank you. Too heavy for Mrs. McCall to move. Yep, homemade ice cream for dinner. And what do you want to bet? It'll be fresh peas. Hmm. Well, I gotta go. Excuse me, Mr. Barton. Well, thanks for the assist, Clifford. Well, who doesn't like to talk about himself? Open up now, Jack. And give him the works. I could tell him things that'll make his ears burn. <laughs> you probably will. Here, sit down. Thanks. Well, what kind of stuff do you want to know? Your private life, of course. Well, for instance, like uh, Betty and I have been sweethearts since we were in grammar school? Good start. And right from the start, we decided we wanted six children, all of them daughters. Oh, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, but we didn't expect to get three of them all in one mess. But now that they're here, what the heck. Anyway, uh, Betty and I were secretly married during my last year in law school, and as a wedding present, Claudia gave us the house right next door to the family home. She owned the house? Yeah, Dad had given it to her as a wedding present when he finally made up with her after her elopement with Johnny Roberts. She and Johnny never lived in the house because they broke up before the house was finished. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, then Cliff married Ann Waite and they moved in. Claude was going to give the house to them, but they only lived together three months. That ended that. The house next door seems to be rather ill-fated. Not for us. No, sir. The house across the hedge has been doggone wonderful. We moved in and have enjoyed every minute of it. We filled it full of children and we'll probably live there, raise the girls there, and die there. Weren't you in the service during the war? Yeah. Yeah, four years at Fort Sill in Oklahoma and in Korea. We don't talk about that. Well, how's the law business? Did you ever know any rising young attorney who knew where his next fee was coming from? Right now I'm with Judge Hunter's law firm in the city. Hey, I didn't tell you the names of my other three girls. Elizabeth Sharon Ann is six. Janie, almost five, and Mary Lou, two. And the triplet, six months. Yeah. Well, that just about covers the basis for the Jack Barbers. How about walking down to the hammock and meeting the head of the family? Uh, Did you meet Mom? Well, no, the senior Mrs. Barber isn't available for some reason, as I understand it. Oh, well, anyway, come on down and meet Dad. He'll probably want to begin at the beginning and take you over the whole story again. Besides showing you every nook and cranny of the Sky Ranch. Ah, good. He may even want to make a date in town to show you his gardens and the family home where he raised his brood. Is that him? Over there on the hammock? Yeah. He comes up here for a vacation and spends nine-tenths of it right there in that one spot. Here we come, Dad. Pull yourself together for visitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on with you. Yes, I'm still sitting. Sounds like he was expecting it. Well, well, Mr. Parton, it's taken you long enough to get around to the real source of information in this family. <laughs> what did I tell you? Mr. Barton, this is my father, Mr. Henry Barber. Dad, Mr. Barton. Yeah, glad I don't know you. Oh, here, please, don't get up. Oh, nonsense. How can I show you the sky ranch lying flat on my back? Okay, fella, you're an expert hands now. Where are you going, Jack? To get out of these riding clothes and get rid of some of this horse odor. You'll find me at the thrilling pool if you want me later. Be seeing you, Mr. Barton. Yes, sir. You're sure you want to stir around? Certainly, sir. First, let's walk down toward the stable. My son-in-law, Nicholas Lacey, has a model horse breeding ranch there. So I hear. Yes, sir. Can't stand horses, myself. Matter of fact, I can't stand cows either. 
It's all because they take an instant distaste for me. The minute they see me, sparks of hatred shoot out of their eyes. <laughs> How can a man like an animal in the face of such viciousness? <laughs> Are you saying all cows and horses look at you with hatred? My point is that... Huh? You hear that? That's Sky Baby. Heard it. Middle-aged horse now, but when he was born, his mother died, and Nicholas very nearly lost the colt because it wouldn't eat. Finally, Claudia personally fed it from a bottle. Been her animal ever since. There he is out in the paddock. Oh, here he comes towards us. Keep back from the fence. inside of the stable. Hello. What wonderful box stall. <laughs> Nicholas just has the barn renovated this spring. Say, hey, aren't those palominos? Uh, I believe so. Nicholas is just beginning to breed them. Well, that should give you an idea of the stable. Oh, have you seen the swimming pool? Well, no, I haven't. Yes, sir. Well, go there. You know, when my wife and I got married, we were the last of our family. She was the only child of her generation of Martins, and I was the only child of my generation of Barbers. Is that so? Yes. So, when Fanny Martin and Henry Barber united in 1896, we started from scratch. And I mean that financially as well as family. Something to be proud of. I think so. Fanny and I had five children, Paul, Hazel, Clifford, Claudia, and Jack. We now have 13 grandchildren. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very well satisfied. Uh, you began life as a stockbroker, I believe. I did. First as a bank clerk, then an operator in a brokerage house already established, and finally uh, my own business. Yes, sir. The firm still carries my name down on Montgomery Street, and I retired uh, ten years ago. With a tidy fortune, I understand. Yes, sir. You do. Oh, not near the fortune my daughter Claudia has, nor my son-in-law, Nicholas. Oh? Uh, Nicholas brought his fortune from England years ago. Claudia's money came to her for her first marriage. Yes, in fact, the bulk of Claudia's money is actually held in trust for her daughter, June. Oh, that very pretty 16-year-old in the saucy bathing suit I met when I first came? <laughs> Scandalous. What's that? But they allow young girls to wear these days. Hey, George, my mother would have fallen over in a dead faint if one of today's girls had walked before her in such a bathing suit. A dead faint? <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> well, here, we'll take these steps. Yes, yes, they're still in. Well, I don't see any of the children. Oh, well, they've probably gone off about their business. Oh, hi, Dad. Get Mr. Barton a swimsuit and let him have a swim. Want to swim? Oh, no, thank you. Come on, Barton. Water's fine. Thanks, Jessica. Come on, Barton. Hey, Dad. Come on, Barton. 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 Come on, Hey, are you sure you don't want to come in, Mr. Barton? Oh, yes. You're Joan, aren't you? Yes. See what I mean about bathing suits? Hey, what do you call that piece of string you're wearing, Joan? This is my bikini, Grandfather. Do you like it? Well, I'll bring along my magnifying glass and examine it one of these days. Oh, how about a suit, Mr. Barton? Oh, no. Thanks just the same. Oh, here you are, Joan. Oh, hi, Paul. You better get into some clothes. We're heading for the city. Oh, sure. Okay. Just one more dive into the pool. Here I come. Got all your information on the barber? Yes, I think so. Pretty rounded out picture. Oh, there you are, Mr. Barton. You're going to stay for dinner, of course. Uh, let me see. You're Hazel, Mrs. Daniel Murray. That's right. You well, are going to stay. Well, I thought I'd ride back into town with a wall here if he has room. Oh, of course. Oh, that's too bad. What's the matter? Isn't he going to stay? He says not. I'm Claudia, remember? Mrs. Nicholas Lacey. Oh, yes. I've got you all placed pretty definitely now, I think. Huh? Why, you couldn't possibly know all there is to know about the barbers in this short time. Oh, no, but I've got a good solid basis, and I'll pick up the rest of the threads of the story as I join you every Monday night from now on. Hey, you'll certainly be welcome. Hey, hey, Dad, watch me this time. Watch this Jack Barber diving board special. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Dad, I suppose your foot slipped again. It's a gem. Who put Vaseline on the springboard? Oh, that's not Vaseline, Jack. Margaret's still the John Cole 
cream. That diving board's slick as glass. Well, that's a barber family for you. Tell you, after you've broken your neck. <laughs> comes to you from California. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.